I now look to Bim Afulami, the ex-librarian, to continue the case for the proposition. Gosh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, all of you, for, for being here in seventh week. Thank you, um, in particular, uh, for being here, because, I mean, I left... Oxford in 2007, so it's, it's very special for me to come back, and it's, it's amazing how some things, some things never change, and yet at the same time everything, everything seems to. And, and What I want to talk about this evening is, is, is the European Union as an institution today, so not the European ideal, though I recognise the glorious ideals that it definitely was, sort of was born out of. But I also want to bring any historians. So how many people in this room study British history? Right, many of you. I studied British history at University College many years ago, and one of the first texts they get you to read is Gibbon, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. They still do that? No. Right. Oh, they stopped. <laughs> well, OK, some things do change. OK. So, but if you read Gibbon, um, and it's a very long book, but what it talks about are structural long-term weaknesses which he argued led to the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. And are these structural long-term weaknesses that I submit to this house this evening are the cause of why the European Union is doomed uh, for decline and fall in our time. And I'm going to talk about one main thing, which is the Euro. Now, we have, we've heard a bit about the Euro, not um, as much as I had actually would have expected at this stage. And I want to make a couple of very clear points about the euro, which I believe illustrate that the European Union is structurally unsustainable and is doomed to fail. The euro seeks to bind together a countries and economies wildly divergent with uh, differences. Their countries as different as Germany and Greece being the most extreme examples. Point of information? Yes. Doesn't the US dollar do the same by connecting California with Mississippi? It does. And I'm going to come on to exactly this particular point. And just to say to you, the reason why the United States can work is because it has a single treasury, a single finance minister, and a system of transfers between the states. And if you have that, then you can definitely bind together wildly divergent economies, in which case you are right. And the reason, and in fact, you, you made me cut out sort of the next two minutes of guff, so I'll just get straight to the main point. <laughs> the reason why the euro is unsustainable is because it has one interest rate, one interest rate, one exchange rate, trying to bind together these wildly divergent economies without being able to devalue your currency in an economy such as Portugal or Greece. You can't devalue because you have a fixed exchange rate and a fixed interest rate. The only thing you can do is have an internal devaluation. Now, what that means in real world speak is that means lower prices, lower wages, lower asset values for everybody in that country. And what you saw over the last couple of years in Greece in particular, Greece being the most egregious example, are people's livelihoods, their futures, young people unemployment, 50%. Portugal, 40%. Spain, it's now about 25%, and they're celebrating as seeing that as a recovery. That has come about because the European Union has no system of fiscal transfers. Why? Because it does not have a state. The European Union... Yes. I think one of the honourable members has already mentioned that the EU and the Eurozone are not one and the same. The Eurozone, you're, you're right, sir, but the Eurozone is at the heart of the European project. And in order, for the Euro, in order for the European Union and the Euro to survive, it would need to develop a single treasury and a single finance minister, which they know they need to do, but the reason why they cannot do it, and this is the, the second part of my speech, is because the politics will not allow it. Why will the politics not allow it? Because Europe is not one demos. The word democracy is, means sort of, and those of you who study classics will correct me, but it's something, you know, rule by the people or power by the people. The, the, the people bit is demos. That is a group of people who all feel similar enough 
with shared enough cultural background and history and, and territorial w where they live that they share a, a vision, they share some sort of ideal for their country. Europe does not have one demos, it has several. And as a result, the politics will not allow the European political class to do what they know they need to do, which is fully integrate into a single state with a single finance minister and treasury. And that is the structural weakness of the European Union. Now, we've heard a couple of, of interesting things, and I, I, I really dislike going up against Anna, because she's my colleague in the House of Commons, and trust me, this is not someone you want to be against, generally. I mean, she is a tough lady. But one thing, the, the point she made, um, and I think it was backing up the, 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 the member who started on that side, was that, uh, you know, the European economies are so integrated. You know, they are together. We're all, you know, supply chains are integrated and everything's all together. And isn't this fantastic? Now, in some ways, that is fantastic. But the real fundamental problem is that the Eurozone was a political attempt to bind together countries that were too divergent in economic terms. And by doing that, they have created structural difficulties in the weaker European economies. And as a result, if the European political class wants to do what the, uh, the Honourable Member said, which was, you know, the political will will never allow the European Union to collapse. If they want to push the boat out and fully integrate the European Union into a single state, the people of Europe will revolt. And I will finish and say this. Brexit, and I voted Remain at the referendum, Brexit showed me that a political class cannot get too far ahead of the people it serves. And when that happens, you get interesting results. <laughs> I fear that what would happen with the European Union is, is really one of, they've got a Hobbesian choice. They either do not integrate fiscally, in the way we were talking about earlier, sir, and these weaker European economies who are in the Euro, Greece, Spain, Portugal, and others, they will eventually fall out of love with the European Union altogether because of the difficulties that will cause its people, or they will do what they need to do economically, and politically their people will revolt. I submit this to the House. Thank you.